Hello guys, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Indra Kumaran and I'm going to do this webinar with Sachini. We both are software engineers at IAM team. So today's webinar's topic is identity APIs and the road to digital transformation. So before getting into deep into identity APIs, let's discuss the digital transformations we are experiencing in today's world. So if you take like like five years back, if you buy a new phone, what you have to do is you have to install all the application from the scratch. And if you want the same modification, for, like customization as the, your old phone, you have to do all the themes in the new phone as well. But today, if you buy a new phone, what you have to do is just by logging in using Google Play ID or Google Cloud, some, some cloud IDs, what you can do is you can retrieve the data as well as all the customizations. So that kind of a digital transformations we are facing in today's world. So in this webinar, what we are going to see is how identity APIs has contributed to this kind of a digital transformation. So, so as a first part of this uh, presentation, what we are going to see is the evolution of this IAM. Let us let starts with the story of Julie joining XYZ Corporation. So if you see the XYZ corporations, that has a like initial deployment like this. So it is an application by bounded IAM where each application has maintained their own users. So what Julie has to do is she had to go to each applications like HR application and register herself. And then she has to go to the payroll application and she had to register her. So that kind of a application bounded deployment they have. But soon the XY corporation realized that they have some difficulties in here. So as you see in the HR application, Julie register her name as Julie, but in the payroll, she is register her name with J Julie's with initial. So what we are doing is we are facing this kind of identity mismatches. So XYZ Corporation started to see this kind of problem. So if we summarize these problems in a generic manner for this application bounded IAM, first one is it has a lot of identity mismatch. Second thing is it has huge redundancy like you see each application will maintain its own user store and it's kind of waste of resources second thing is the maintenance also harder so if you see one application can use the user store as ldap other one can use ad so now the devops person has to manage all the users so, so these application bounded im is harder to maintain as well so in the perspective of user, if you see, it is very low user friendly. So here, Julie has to register herself in each of the application. So realizing this problem, XYZ Corporation, what they did is they come up with a new deployment. So as you see, this is their new IAM deployment. What they did is they have decoupled the IDP from each application and they have centralized it. And through using proprietary APIs, they are exposing the users to each of the applications. Here, what Julie has to do is she just have to go and register herself in one IDP. And later on, she can use all the application in XYZ Corp. So for, for, for some times, it has resolved the problem they face with application bounded AI. But soon after, XYZ Corporation started to expand. And they now they had a need of partnershiping with another organization called ABC. Now, what they want Julie is to, she has to log into a CRM application that is belongs to the ABC organization. However, this has become impossible for them because XYZ Corporation is using its own API, like pro proprietary APIs, and it has its own definitions and implementation. And ABC is having its own definition and implementation. 
because of these mismatches between standard APIs, the APIs, they couldn't integrate with one another. So if we generalize this uh, problem in, in one go, we can say the identity mis mismanagement is still there. So now it's in the higher level of silos, like, like department and organization level, still we are facing the identity mismanagement. And another thing is the SSOs, like single sign on and single lockout, those kind of concepts are become are harder between this kind of deployment. Then another important part is if you see, think about the integration between like, so if you if you want to like register one application of another organization into your organization, that is like you can say that is hard or nearly impossible in this kind of centralized proprietary based APIs. So like they started to think what they can do because like this is not a simple solution like earlier one now they have to think about in a very higher level like they have to think in a community level because they have to communicate to very like third parties and potential 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 organizations so they think how they can fix it so what they did is they they started to in accept the standards protocol and standard api so they started to follow them like what they did is they started using some LSSO, schemes, signals, and OpenID, those kind of protocols they used, and they create the APIs according to them. Because of this, what they were able to is they were able to achieve the their main goal they had earlier. Like Julie can now log into CRM application in the ABC organization. So this is the pace where that we can clearly see that identity api started to show their show their importance in iam evolution so if we generalize this importance of identity apis we can say because of these identity apis standard apis the integrations becomes more possible you can say these apis are the backbones of the standard apis are the backbones of this integration the next big thing is they increase the user friendliness now between organizations, between departments, between different silos, you can do single sign-on, single logout, those kind of concepts you, you were able to achieve. And the next best part of standard using standard identity APIs is like, since this is a community level solution, that means like a lot of people are coming together and giving a like a st standardizing these protocols, you can see they have less vulnerabilities comparing to the proprietary ways APIs. So, uh, like, so you can say, in uh, like, uh, X Y Z cooperation has started to become more and more success. They have started to move into a success path. So, if you like see the success path in a single slide, single go, we can say, like, like uh, identity APIs, like identity APIs has created identity integrations because of this identity in integrations uh, we we started to the user started to experience seamless uh, started to have a seamless experience and because of that customer satisfactions are started to increase and this ultimately uh, lead to the business success so this so we can say xyz has reached a happy ending is that so are you sure is this enough for a corporation and their identity access management? So if you think so far, what we have done is we focused on a corporation like XYZ and we started to develop the deployments. That means we give only focus to the business. But who are the real factors of the success of it are the customers. So, like a couple of years back, customer-centered IAM concept started to develop, and customer becomes the center of any evaluations. So, so in the IAM industry, it started a new rift, and like, and it started a new concept called customer IA, where customer is seen as a king. And if you take this CIAM, it has its own features like 
it 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 needs some kind of standards for itself like self sign up services it needs it needs progress profiling it needs that uh, strong authentications then it needed omni channel access it needs a uh, scalability high level scalability securities and it needs privacy concerns like gdpr and those stuff so so this custom iam started to put a different level on iam industry so if you take the xyz corporation you can see the customer iam in this this picture so as you see this kind of a cm deployment is much more complex than the earlier deployment we stand we, we saw with standard apis since these deployments and, and the need are more complex the need and the perspective of uh, identity api started to grow and we needed like much more like much more apis and we 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 started to give more priority to the apis so uh, in the latest report of cooping a call they started to see this uh, identity api as the next level of cam that means in the evolution of iam they they started to see after cam this uh, the next space as this identity api platforms and so what so so far what we have done is uh, we have gone through the iam evolution, evolution and we have seen how significant this identity api is guys and we have seen their role and how they have matured and developed along with this space now my partner sachini will speak more deep into this api and she will discuss about the modern apis you have to consider okay so i'll be talking about what these modern identity apis are and the importance throughout the rest of this webinar so um, although the concept and the use of apis have been around for quite some time the availability of iam and its associated apis has grown gradually into a new market segment over the time so with this iam evolution now we have all the key functionalities that were explained previously by Anthony Kumar exposed via apis this allows for better workflow and orchestration capabilities across environments as well as better devops support throughout automation let's look at looking to the modern api categories available for identity integration I'll be explaining in detail about each and every identity API we have listed here in the upcoming slides. First, we will look at what identity and user management APIs are. Well, these are the APIs that allow for the management of identities and user accounts including all the associated directory services and databases. If you take Kim it's a good example for this identity API category. Skim, system for cross-domain identity management. From the name itself, it says about cross-domain. So it's all about integration. Um, it's more using this diagram. Well, there are three identity providers governing three sets of user stores. They can be Active Directory, LDAP, or MySQL. Well, a user in the BB organization needs to access resources in AA organization. So the user needs to be provisioned to AA organization. And at the same time, the user needs to be provisioned to an external IDP named CC organization. So this is possible through Scheme, which is kind of like a REST standard for user provisioning. Next, we'll look into authorization APIs. These APIs play a huge role in the IAM domain because uh, these are the APIs that controls user or admin access rights to resources such as policy management or dynamic authorization. Well, I'll explain this using Auth2.0. Uh, let's say you're on YouTube and you need to share a video on Facebook. So uh, you're clicking share button 
and then Facebook pops up and asks for your login credentials. And then you give the credentials and then give consent and then the video gets shared on Facebook. Well, what basically happens here is that you want to share a video and then you ask YouTube to do it. But the thing is, YouTube cannot do that as it doesn't have your credentials. So Facebook comes into the middle of this and it gets your credentials and issues an access token to YouTube so it can post the video on behalf of you. So this is basically achieved with O2.0. O2.0 has multiple grants um, which are basically the use cases for authorization. I'll take authorization code grant to explain about the identity APIs we have in authorization. So there's an authorization server, a resource server, and application that needs access on behalf of the user. The user grants consent so that the authorization server can issue a token. The client can then use this token to access the resource. So as a prerequisite for this, client needs to be registered with the authorization server. Although this can be done manually, you can't always go and do that. So this can be done via dynamical client registration APIs. And also resource server can give the token to the authorization server and ask whether this is a valid token. This can be achieved using introspect APIs. Okay, keeping that in mind, let's move on to authentication APIs. This is basically the authentication method support via APIs within the range of username, password, to biometric, and anything in between. Also, this supports SSO, single sign-on, and session management availability. I'll explain this with OpenID Connect. So, as I explained earlier, what 20 is about authorization. It does not deal with authentication. From an auth access token, you can't figure out who the user is also, or the information of a user. So OpenID Connect comes into the picture to fill this gap. This is basically an authentication layer created on top of auth 20 So with this, it has introduced a new token named ID token containing all the user information, or the user claims. So the client app is now aware of who the user is and what the claims are. This has also introduced an endpoint named user info. So a token can be given to the user info endpoint and get additional information from the authorization server. Well, I won't go, go into deeper about this OIDC flow, but what happens here is you get an ID token with the access token, and the ID token is for authentication, whereas the access token is for authorization. Apart from the previous APIs, workflow and orchestration API also contributes immensely to the IAM domain. That's because these are the APIs that allow for autom automation of workflows, such as access request, use self-registration or user consent, or the orchestration of more than one flow, one workflow or activity. Um, in this category, we can identify user self-registration and user consent management as the main highlights. So um, when it comes to user self-registration, let's say um, there are users already, they have existing identities um, such as Facebook IDs, medium accounts. So they want to bring these existing identities to an identity platform. So that's how uh, user self-registration APIs comes into this picture. Uh, so with this, the user onboarding experience is also improved. User consent uh, is, so when it comes to user consent management, User consent is needed for multiple use cases. As an example, uh, you have to get consent in user onboarding. And when an IDP interacts with other applications, you need to give consent in the initial login process. And also, if a user needs to change these con con consents later on, uh, those needs to be supported as well. 
So user consent management APIs are also important for this API category. These are the APIs, audit and compliance APIs, are uh, the APIs that support monitoring of users' access to resources, or you can say administrators' changes to the system, and as well as APIs that provide auditing and forensic capabilities. And when it comes to forensic capabilities, what you can do is you can integrate the IAM platform with a fraud, detect fraud detecting engine or an analytic engine so that you can feed all the security events to it. And then there you can generate the events you need to handle. As for auditing purposes, well, in a developer's perspective, this is basically an important requirement when it comes to monitoring news access and security incident analysis and so on. Well, these are not the only API categories we see in IAM domain. When it comes to DevOps APIs, these are the APIs that provide IT environment support options for both developers and the operations team. So this supports their tools, automation, and continuous integrations. When it comes to API security and API developer support, these are basically the characteristics that need to be fulfilled by a fully fledged IAM platform. Well, API security is more like the solution's ability to secure APIs against um, hacker attacks and other threats using methods such as um, encryption, content filtering, and schema validation. And finally, API developer support is basically given for the developers using uh, the solution's APIs through documentation, tutorials, and tools, which is basically the community support for developers. Um, considering all the available, I mean, considering all the uh, these availability of all these identity APIs, we are really happy to say that we have been named as an overall leader in the identity API market through the latest coping call analysis, and we are the only open source IAM vendor in leader category. So, as to sum up this, we talked about the evolution of IAM and how identity APIs came into the picture and how important they are for the IAM market. Basically, this has supported the digital transformation over the past years. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask them now. Okay, so uh, there's a question. Uh, what, what are the audit APIs that WSO2 offer? So uh, um, mainly, uh, in WSO2, we have these uh, auditing APIs with uh, log4j support, and uh, and uh, also we have uh, analytics streaming support. So, uh, so we have another question: like, uh, is identity API is the next phase of IAM, or is like, uh, so what is the difference between identity API and CAM phase? So the thing is like, uh, as we mentioned, so identity APIs were already there, but the problem is their importance started to grow over the IAM evolution. And currently like, like keeping like, a call, like, so like according to like their reports, we are seeing this identity API platform as the next phase. So that is the, the difference we are seeing. So although CAM using the identity APIs, since they, importance increase we are seeing this as a next phase we have another questions like uh, what are the new and up upcoming standards so api like w so like we are working on so currently like we are working on like uh, making rest api so like so far we have a lot of admin service uh, so, uh like xml based uh, api supports so now what we are doing is we are doing a rest api supports as well and as a standards wise, you can see we are working on Shiba and those kind of device related auth standards. And these will be like upcoming things in WSO2. And adding to that, uh, there's a question. Are the APIs primarily SOAP based? Are you migrating towards REST? Well, we have actually SOAP based APIs. And as the next phase, 
we are migrating towards REST as well. So uh, that's that's an in progress activity we have now. And there is another question like whether that is API security achieved by API manager. Uh, the currently like so these APIs are like developed according to the standard. So these API itself they have the uh, security level stuff. So like uh, API manager and these identity APIs are like uh, different things. Uh, there's another question. Does WSO2 identity server support multi-tenant solutions? In other words, single platform for multiple domains, customers, realms. Well, yeah. Uh, IS supports identity server supports multi-tenant solutions, as in um, And uh, there is another question like, are there REST APIs to cover all aspects of configuring an application? Uh, uh, the thing is, like, uh, most of the like APIs we have, and uh, uh, we have some of the REST APIs, and but in the upcoming versions, uh, we are like creating the REST APIs as well. So, with the upcoming versions, yeah, you can see the REST APIs to con uh, configure these applications directly. So there is another question like uh, how how are the identity APIs secured? So what are the authentication mechanisms are supported? So like can we uh, plug in custom authentication mechanisms? Yes, uh, it's like so like we have like different authenticators. So for each authenticators has like uh, its own like uh, so we are based on the standards. So according to those standards, uh, those APIs are secured. So uh, if you say like uh, mm, and uh, and the thing is like uh, and the questions go, goes on like can we add a custom authentication mechanism ourselves? Yes, uh, we can write custom authenticators and uh, like uh, we are supporting the adaptive script. So if you want, you can do a, like a, a multiple steps in front of those things, and then you can make a like a multi-step authenticators as well. Um, there's another question. So is it the most recommended tool to use role scope access for API Cloud already? Has it integrated? Well, uh, for this, Skim is the API, as I have already um, explained to you about. Uh, Skim can be used for this, but currently it's not exposed in the cloud. And uh, there's another question. Uh, can you give few examples of identity APIs. Well, as we have uh, explained earlier, uh, there are scheme APIs. And um, when it comes to authorization and authentication flows, uh, there are introspect APIs, uh, dynamic client registration APIs, and user, user onboarding as in uh, user self-registration APIs. So there are uh, different, different uh, APIs according to those categories I have explained earlier. So um yeah and uh, there is another question like is iam restricted to wso tesb or it can be used with other platforms uh, yes like uh, we are not re restricted to esb so esb is a different product and i iam is a different product so we support like most of the uh, standard uh, uh, connections with like most of the uh, uh, connectors so like we, we we supports connections between like other uh, integration platforms as well. So uh, I think those are the questions that we have and hope you hope we have answered all of them. So thank you guys for joining. Thank you.